we wanted to bring you on, kind of talk about Georgia Tech, kind of see where you're coming from. Kind of, we call it the in the through the eyes of the enemy. This kind of the show, mm-hmm. and um, you're live right now. So hot mic, man. Uh, but welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you for having me on. Um, and I got my co-host here, Alan. You won't be able to see him. He's Skype through the other end. We got a lot of stuff going on, man. It's crazy. But um, Alan's on the show. He's going to ask you some questions. I'm going to ask you some questions. But thanks for coming. Uh, and let's get started, if you don't mind. All right. Sounds great. All right. So Georgia Tech went seven and six last year, five and three in conference play, finished the season, uh, you know, kind of with uh, losses to Georgia and Minnesota in the quick lane bowl, but still having what I would say, you know, is some pretty good quality win streak kind of towards the end of the season against Virginia Tech and North Carolina Tar Heels, Miami and overtime win against Virginia. Um, What do you feel? How does the fan base feel going into the 2019 season? Uh, Well, I will say the end of last year was uh, particularly rough, uh, especially the two games that you mentioned uh, against Georgia. I was at that game. It was miserable. Um, there, there's really no better term for it. Going to Athens and essentially getting curb stomped by your biggest rival. It, it, it's not a fun time. It, it's, it really destroys like any hope that you have. Um, and then coming out flat for the bowl game, Paul Johnson's last game after w- such an incredible career and seeing them come out flat and not being able to pull out that victory. It was tough. And then going into the offseason, seeing Paul Johnson step away from the game and then the first name being talked about as the next head coach being Ken Wisenhunt didn't inspire a lot of confidence (laughs) in uh, the Georgia Tech fan base, Um, especially my staff. Uh, We we had very strong opinions against Ken Wisenhunt. Um, And then when news broke that Jeff Collins was going to be the new coach, things were a little different. Uh, Some people had the reservations that I mean, as you do with bringing in a coach that's only had two years of head coaching experience. Uh, but since he's been named the head coach, uh, he's done what Paul Johnson really never could in embracing the city of Atlanta for what it is and making it appealing, which is seems like something that I don't know, maybe it just seems like common sense that you should try to do that. No one's ever really done. Uh, So at this point, there's a lot of excitement in Atlanta, um, especially with the fan base. Uh, Jeff Collins has people excited, and a lot of people are ready to see what's going to happen because of it. Now, uh, how long have you been a Georgia Tech fan? I've been a Tech fan my entire life. Uh, My parents actually met at Georgia Tech. uh, So despite uh, living and growing up in Athens and actually graduating from UGA, um, I am still a Georgia Tech fan. Oh, wow, so you 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 were a Georgia you were a Georgia Bulldog on on the the diploma, but mm-hmm. not in your heart. That's interesting. I don't know if yeah. I could do that, man. Alan, do you <laughs> think that you could be have a diploma from that other school in the universe in, in the the, the uh, state that we don't talk about? I would not have a diploma from that from that school. <laughs> no way. <laughs> well, UGA makes it really easy. You just drive through, and they throw one out. Uh, you just kind of catch it from your window. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I know that Georgia Tech doesn't do that, and I think that's kind of been the difficulty, too. When I look at it, I'm not a big Georgia Tech you know, follower or anything, but I look at Georgia Tech and I think, man, you know, typically they have higher standards or pretty mm-hmm. high standards when it comes to academic side mm-hmm. of things. So it seems like that kind of makes it harder to get. And I know Paula Johnson towards the end was kind of complaining a lot about they don't put enough money into the football program. What do you think? I mean, I would definitely agree. I mean, we've even seen a bit of a change. Um, Ken Segura over at the AJC actually just put an, put an article out today talking about new coaching salaries. And it's up a good bit from this, like the staff that Paul Johnson had. Like uh, I saw that uh, Brent Key, who isn't technically like the main offensive coordinator, is the, like outside of Collins, is the highest paid coach on staff at $600,000, which outside of Ted Roof and Al Grow, no coach under Paul Johnson ever came close to that. Um, so I guess some of the boosters have seen, like met with Jeff Collins, see, uh, like seen what this program might be capable of and have started to invest more money. I know Todd Stansbury has made it um, a very big point to raise money for the athletic initiative in 2020. 
Uh, I think the goal is around $120 million and they're getting pretty close. Uh, I think they're around 85 right now. Um, wow. So, yeah. You... Uh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, the academics make it difficult because uh, being 16, 17 years old with dreams of the NFL, uh, those dreams don't normally include calculus. Um, <laughs> But I think Jeff Collins is doing a good job of selling Georgia Tech in spite of that. Like we've already seen some of the improvements in recruiting, uh, getting guys like Miles Brooks, who's four star corner, honestly one of the best recruits Tech has had committed in a long time. Uh, some of the other recruits I'm really excited about uh, quarterback Tucker Gleason uh, from down in Florida, same high school as Aaron Murray. Um, he's also doing a really good job of just making connections, like getting people interested in Georgia Tech that wouldn't have been under Paul Johnson. Mm -hmm. um, what I was going to say is, you know, a lot of people are saying already in the comments about the offense being the, the you know, it's going to be completely revamped. And it's going from your traditional option attack that Paul Johnson had for 11 years, 10, 11 years there, uh, and now going into what Jeff Collins has. How do you feel looking at the spring game, kind of seeing what they have done so far? Is it something that they the team has accepted? Is it something that the players are kind of the players that he has now fit for? Uh, I think it's a process. Um, obviously, coming from an option style offense and going to what Jeff Collins keeps calling a press style offense, it's really more of an up tempo spread. It's a big change. Um, I expect it'll probably still be pretty run heavy this year just because that's where Georgia Tech's strengths are in running the ball. I mean, you've got three quarterbacks who could, uh, who are all good with the ball in their hands, plus a million and a half running backs. Um, as far as what that will look like this year in terms of um, that process, I guess the biggest key is going to be how the offensive line transitions uh, from going to kind of in your face run blocking into more of a zone blocking, uh, pass blocking, like regularly and like standing up and like holding your ground. Um, I think they've got a fantastic offensive line coach to teach them how to do it with Brent Key. Um, that was probably the best surprise of the off season, in my opinion. Alan, what you got for him? Well, first of all, I want to say uh, say hey to April. My sister just joined us, so thanks for watching. Uh, but, you know, a lot of people were talking about uh, a lot of experts predicting that, you know, Jeff Collins would go after a, a grad transfer quarterback that could come in, you know, with immediate eligibility, and obviously they didn't. So uh, kind of what are your feelings about that position going, in, uh, going into the season? Uh, well, I, too, wanted a grad transfer quarterback. <laughs> um, I had a pretty good feeling Jalen Hurts wasn't going to happen. Uh, so I actually had my eyes set on uh, Buffalo's Tyree Jackson before he decided to go pro. Um, I really liked what he brought to the table in terms of being a big arm quarterback who can still move. Um, I think with proper development, he could have done really well. Um, the Jackson and Jalen Hurts are also the only two quarterbacks that I would have felt more comfortable with than what Georgia Tech already has. Um, now, obviously, we haven't seen a lot of passing from Georgia Tech in the last 11 years, but Towards the end of his career, Paul Johnson got a little bit better about finding quarterbacks who can actually pass. Um, the main one I'm thinking of is the guy who's presumed to be the starter right now, Lucas Johnson. Uh, he's getting ready to um, come into his retro junior year. Um, coming uh, from California, when he came, like he was primarily a passing quarterback. Like you go back, watch his high school film, and he's thrown it all over the field. Um, obviously, being behind. Uh, Take Juan Marshall, who was decent in the offense. Um, Justin Thomas' freshman year, um, he hasn't really gotten much of a chance to play. Um, he could have gotten more of a chance last year, but he dealt with, uh, I believe, is a list Frank injury that kept him out for the season. Uh, but there were stocks like if that injury didn't happen, he may have been the starter by the end of the year. And I think the offense would have looked entirely different. Um, so coming into this year, um, I'm not expecting Johnson to come out and throw for 3,000, 3,500 yards, anything like that. But I think you'll see probably more of a West Coast style quarterback um, making quick, uh, quick passes that are easy and letting the receivers really just take the ball and run and depending a little bit more on yards after the catch. Awesome. Awesome. So, 
Um, I know they were putting up like 34 points per game on average, um, and that was mostly kind of running in that, that you know, option-style attack. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like that they're going to be able to continue 34 points per game average, or is it going to kind of go down? What are your thoughts on that? And uh, then I'll get your prediction after that on what do you oh, think with the first game of the season? Uh, well, I would love for Georgia Tech to keep averaging 34 points a game. Um, I also know that this is about as difficult as a transition as you can make for an offensive line. Um, and especially not really having the talent and development on the offensive line. Um, it's going to be tough for them to average 34 points a game. Um, Again, I would love to see it, but I don't think it happens. Uh, I could see it being maybe like 28 to 30, but uh, 34 is a pipe dream at this point. Well, what's your prediction? You know, it's the first game of the season, Thursday night, Clemson, Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech's got to go that long trip all the way to Death Valley, just a couple hours down 85 and play. Are you going to go to the game one, and what do you think your prediction is for the game? Uh, I'm going to try to go to the game. Uh, I'm in the midst of a job hunt, so I don't know exactly what my life is going to look like come August. So we'll see about that. Uh, I will certainly try to go. As far as a prediction, uh, I'm going to say Clemson by a lot. (laughs) Well, let me ask you this. This might be a little bit better of a question for you. Do you think that they'll be able to compete seriously in the Coastal? Because most of the articles and most of the experts have already given uh, Miami the title for the Coastal Division. I'll say yes, they can compete, but only because the rest of the coastal is kind of a crapshoot right now. Um, I, I personally, I wouldn't even give it to Miami. Um, I'm not totally sold on uh, Manny Diaz as a coach. Um, I'm more of a wait and see kind of thing with them. Uh, I think Virginia's going to win it this year. Uh, I like their quarterback, Bryce Perkins, and really, they're the only ones that I feel like we know what we're going to get out of them. I think every, every other team in the Coastal is just kind of a question mark at this point. Yeah, well, hey, Benjamin, uh, let our fans know. Thank you for coming on the show, by the way. But let our fans yeah, know how they can watch your stuff and see your writing and and uh, how they can get in touch with you, follow you on social media. All right. Uh, well, obviously, you can check out our website from therumbleseat.com. That's where we post all of our stuff. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at FTRSBlog. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at FTRSBen. Uh, you can also like us on Facebook at From the Rumble Seat. All right, Ben. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you for giving us a little peek inside of Georgia Tech, and I hope you have a good rest of the night, man. Thank you. Thanks for having me on.